When combining data from multiple samples, you run into a bit of a problem with the standard deviation, because this is not something you can simply add or average. But there are good tricks how to do it, so let's dive into a practical way of combining multiple sample sets. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel, where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And today's video is a bit of a statistical thing, but you might run into it in a practical situation from time to time. And that is when we have a number of samples that come from well, one big production or they are the same product but they ran on different days and you would like to combine the data. So you, you have all of these samples, they each are fully calculated, you do not have the original sample data anymore but you do have the descriptive statistics. So that means you have the, the average, the mean, you have the standard deviation or a spread and you would like to know what are these same values but then for my total production. Now there are different reasons why you might want to do this. For instance, even by just looking at this sample set, you see that our sample B has a slightly different mean than the rest of the samples and we might want to check if B is significantly different from the rest of our production. Now an ANOVA analysis variance method will also calculate this for us, but a nice way to do this for instance with a t-test would be to compare this sample to the average of the rest of the production. So how do we get this average? We need to have the mean and the standard deviation of our samples. So here for each we do have this mean and we do have the standard deviation. But the question becomes when we combine multiple how do we get the mean and the standard deviation of all of them or at least of a group of samples? Now, as I said, the easiest way is if we have the underlying data, simply filter the data and calculate the mean and the standard deviation for the whole data set. This is the easiest and most reliable method. But if you have batch records or production information that basically only states these parameters, so only the mean and the standard deviation, which is quite common in your registration systems that you might find in your organization, then there is a bit of a trick. But let's start with the mean. This one is relatively simple. So we know all these means and if we take these four then the mean we get here is in fact the average of the mean, so the mean of the means. So taking the average of the means of our samples gives us the average or actually the mean of our total sample set. If we do the same with the standard deviation, things will go wrong. Now, when your standard deviations are almost the same, you can just take an average and it will actually get really close or exactly at the standard deviation of the total population. But then again, this will of course be at any time when you have the same value here, any method of averaging it should give the correct answer. I mean, otherwise we really are not making an average. But as soon as we see that there are some smaller and some larger standard deviations in our different samples, then we cannot simply go and um, sum them and divide them, so not take the average. And this is because the standard deviation, it is the square root of a variation and we have to add variations together. You can take the, um, the average of the variations of your samples. Now, what does that mean? It means that we have to go for, so the average of the squares of our standard deviation, so we take all of these standard deviations here and we square them, then you get variances. If you have variance in your data set, you can just take that number. That one, you can take the average. So we are looking for the average variance of the samples that we are going to combine and then we take the square root of this average and then we get back to a standard deviation. And like this we can get the mean and the standard deviation from several sample sets and combine them into the mean and standard deviation of the total of those samples. Now a couple pointers also, when you see this one here that really has a different mean, you do have to think twice before 
adding it into the mix because it has a relatively low standard deviation around its own center, so around its own mean. But if we would take all of these numbers together, we would get a relatively bigger standard deviation. Then these would be sort of maybe not outliers, but stretching ranges within our data set. So if we combine them all, our standard deviation should be bigger than the average of all of those. That's why when we want to check if they are different, take the rest, average those, and then compare. On the other hand, if there are not so big differences in the means, you can get away with this uh, and, and making the, the total comparison, making the average through variance to get back to the overall standard deviation. So a short video about a pretty specific statistical topic, but I do see it come back in the analysis work and the continuous improvement stuff that uh, I do from time to time. So I thought I'd share it with you as well. Let me know if you liked it by hitting that thumbs up and don't forget to tell me in the comments what other topics you would like me to discuss or do you have some other, those small specific things that you see in analyses or in our improvement tools that you would like me to explain, I'd be happy to do that as well for you. For now, I wish you the best of luck in your analyses and other statistical continuous improvement work, but as always, also enjoy that improvement journey.